So um, I'm at Skylight Books, one of my favorite uh, new bookstores in the world. I, I specify that because I'm kind of a used bookstore uh, a loyalist. But this is a heavenly spot, and I'm kind of starved for this situation because uh, where I am in Claremont is a congenial place to live, but it's got a howling absence of bookstores. I'm shopping in a uh, kind of spasmodic way here, um, buying too many things, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the register after this. This is a novel that I just have an intuition about. Uh, in the light of what we know, Zia Hader Raman. I don't know much more than that it uh, has a, just immediately has a kind of um, uh, a cognitive oxygen on the page, like interesting words and um, political context. The guy is a late bloomer, it looks like. First novel, worked as a banker and an international human rights lawyer. I, I just, I like the jacket and I'm gonna go for it. So here's Satin Island by Tom McCarthy. It's like the opposite situation. I'm buying a book that I've literally already read very recently, uh, but in galleys. I guess it was his second written novel, but first published called Remainder, and I was crazy for it, and I've been pretty much um, uh, amazed by his, not just his writing, but his activities and his conversation, and he's got a kind of a partner in crime, um, the philosopher uh, Simon Critchley and Tom and Simon do this thing called the International Necronautical Society. I also really like it because even though Tom is British, it has a, um, a mention of the New York Mets in it. And so I, I collect books about the Mets. So I needed to buy a hardcover of it. it. Fortunately, they've also made it gorgeous and kind of irresistible. I, I like the way the flap is horizontal. It's, those kind of details make me happy. And look, it's, it's Mets colors, too, just like Dissident Gardens. Um, okay, so um, here's another excellent uh, example of an impulse purchase. I'm adventures in immediate irreality. Irreality is a word I like. And uh, then Max B Blecker, if he's not a hoax, you know, here we have another, like, a European writer, Romanian writer, died young, um, uh, died of, well, tuberculosis, so we've got the Kafka note being struck here. Um, and uh, I pretty much was sold, oh, Bruno Schultz is also invoked. So I'm in, I'm in my neighborhood here, I like that. Um, if, uh, if this isn't good, it's, it's, it's good anyway. You know, it's like good in, on principle. Richard McGuire here, I've been wanting to get my hands on this. It's like a cake, total beautiful, also really, sturdy, amazing book, so it's like a great physical object. McGuire was the bass player for a band, uh, like a no-wave band called Liquid Liquid. I don't know if no-wave was the right movement for them, but um, everyone knows his bass playing without knowing that they have ever heard of Liquid Liquid because Richard McGuire was the guy who played this riff. Boom, 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 boom. And it was sampled for White Lines. Uh, and then eventually they split royalties with Liquid Liquid, uh, I think under a certain amount of legal pressure. So he's like got this amazing piece of your brain already colonized. But he, after that he became a children's book author and, um, uh, and now he's been, I guess, working on this epic graphic novel for a really long time. And I've been hearing from people that it's astounding. So I just, we're way over three minutes already, right? Uh, the new Rebecca Solnit collection, it's like a, I think it's a kind of a core sample of her occasional essays, which I like the sound of, you know, like uh, just her on a lot of different subjects. There's good titles in here. One Nation Under Elvis, Climate Change is Violence. And um, it has also a good irresistible Borgesian kind of organizational thing where there's the alphabet, so the, the, the sense of the book is, is created by the alphabet. And also this really nice end paper, check this out, where the, the essays are geographically mapped according to where in the world they, that should be good. And then this needs very little explanation, Kim Gordon's book, also just something I've been uh, waiting to, to grab a copy of. There's probably going to be a lot of bad rock star books, but I, I, I'm 
I'm really hopeful about this one because I know these guys are pretty literate and they're also going to tickle my like, you know, New York nostalgia. They'll be writing about the Lower East Side as I as I remember it. Um, so there's that. That's my tonight's shopping.